Hello again. This is Matthew 1120 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Rectilinear Motion, A Gentle Introduction. As always, please be an attentive learner as you watch this video. <clears throat> Rectilinear motion means motion along a straight line. And by way of introduction, in uh, 2012, Felix Baumgartner, shown here, set a world record for the highest skydive by jumping out of a balloon basket at a height of more than 38 kilometers, which ends up being 24 miles. At this altitude, air resistance is negligible, and consequently, within about <clears throat> 30 seconds, Baumgartner was traveling faster than the speed of sound. The speed of sound is something very important uh, in ultrasound physics. He's the first person to travel that fast outside of an aircraft. We're going to be talking about uh, velocity here and speed and even acceleration. So let's suppose that we have a drag car. Here's the starting line. Here's the finish line. But the car starts here at a stop, but its position at time t1 is at one second uh, is here at 19 meters. And at T2, which is 4 seconds, it is over here at 277 meters on its way. And during that time, it went from 1 second to 4 seconds. So the change in time is 4 minus 3. And the change in position is this number minus this number, x2 minus x1, which is 258. So the average velocity is v average in the x direction is x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. And this is abbreviated delta x over delta t. Now, if you multiply both sides by delta t, this says that delta x is equal to uh, the average velocity. I Here I call it v bar times delta t. This is really distance equals rate times time. Now the units of velocity are going to be meters per second. And uh, in this case, t2 is greater than t1. And uh, if the motion is in the uh, y direction, we just replace x with y. It still could be in a line. In fact, the guy jumping out of the balloon basket was going straight down. And the Greek letter delta is interpreted as the final value of some quantity minus the initial value. And also, you can think about that as the change. So this is the change in x over the change in t. Now, notice that I could have a truck going the other way, um, starting at the finish line. And at time t1, at 6 seconds, they could be here. But they're going this way, and at T2 being 16 seconds, they're over here. And notice that the endpoints are the same as before, but now the truck's going the other way. So delta x is going to be a negative number, and the average velocity in the x direction is negative 26, and this is going to be meters per second. But it's negative because he's going in the reverse direction. Again, notice that velocity in this case with the units meters per second is a vector quantity. Direction makes a difference. So velocity is a vector quantity, and so is average velocity. So let's do a problem, <clears throat> and we'll apply our definition of a, um, average velocity to a swimming competition. During one heat of a swim meet, a swimmer performs the crawl stroke in a pool 50 meters long. So they're doing a race here, and they're doing a crawl stroke 50 meters. And you see the picture. She swims uh, a length, that's one lap, one length of the pool, at racing speed. And it took her 24 seconds to cover the length of the pool, which was 50 meters. She then, after finishing her race, she takes twice that time to swim casually back to her starting point and get out. Uh, of the water. A, find her average velocity for each length, that is going this way and going back, and her average velocity for the entire swim. Well, in part one, you see she starts at zero and finishes at 50, and it took her 24 seconds. So you divide the two, and you get uh, 50 minus zero over 24 minus zero, 
and that is 2.08, and the units are important meters per second. On the way back, it took 48 seconds because we said it was double the time, but it's the same distance, but this is going to be 0 minus 50, and this is going to be 72 seconds minus uh, 24 seconds because that's the way the time has changed. You see she turned right around and swam back. So this is minus 104 uh, meters per second. Uh, now you're going in the opposite direction. Now, if you really think about that, what was the average velocity? Well, you might think about averaging these two numbers, but the times are different, so you have to be careful. And if you think about the definition of average velocity, it is your starting place minus your ending place, which are the same. So you see her average velocity was zero. Somewhat surprising. Now, you can think about the average velocity being the slope. And remember, our drag car uh, started slowly but started going faster and faster and faster. And so the average velocity can be thought of this as a slope between these two lines. And if we think about uh, instantaneous velocity, it would be the slope of the tangent line uh, to the curve at any point. So if I were going to Indianapolis and I did 210 miles in three hours, my average speed would be 70 but I would have to be going faster than 70 because there's a lot of stoplights and things in between my starting point and my destination. So the average velocity is different than the instantaneous velocity. Let's look at another example. Let's suppose that we're, we're having a cheetah here and the cheetah starts at 20 meters per second at time uh, zero, but starts moving faster and faster and faster, and is chasing after this antelope, and the antelope is at 50 meters. So uh, the situation is described uh, uh, here, and we're watching this from our vehicle, uh, and we want to find the displacement of the cheetah during the interval between t equal 1 and t equal 2. We want to find the average velocity during that time interval, and estimate the instantaneous velocity at time t equal 1 second by taking delta t the change in t to be only a tenth of a second. Okay, well here is the equation. We start at 20 meters per second, and the equation, this is t squared times this. Now notice when I take meters per second squared times second squared, I just get meters. So meters and meters give me meters. So I just plug into this equation. So at time t equal 2, I plug in and I have 40. And so you see the delta x then is going to be the difference between 40 and 25, which is plus 15. And that means um, when we went from 1 to 2, the average is going to be 40 minus 25 over 2 minus 1. 15 over 1 is 15 meters per second. But if I change it just a little bit, uh, what I will see is that the average uh, velocity is... Uh, going to be 10.5 meters per second. And so what really happens is the smaller and smaller I take uh, this delta t, I get closer and closer to 10, which would have been the instantaneous velocity. To really study instantaneous velocity, you have to study calculus, which is beyond the scope of what we do here, although you study calculus and do physics a lot, and maybe someday you will uh, study that. Now we defined velocity, which was a vector quantity, but speed is not. Average speed is the distance traveled by the time taken to travel that distance. An instantaneous speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector at any given moment. It's the magnitude of the velocity vector. We're taking it, it's, that's how long the velocity vector is. That is not having to do with what direction. Now the units are going to be meters per second. So an uh, important takeaway is speed is scalar. I can be going 50 miles per hour in my car, but it makes a difference if I'm going south, in which case from Wheaton I would end up in Joliet, or north, in which case I would end up in Schomburg. So speed is what we call a scalar. That means it's not a vector. And it's possible for the average velocity to be zero while the average speed is finite, and we saw that in the swimming example. 
Now here's a video I'm also recommending that you watch, and this uh, talks about uh, velocity acceleration and actually even potential and kinetic energy. So this is a really an excellent video for you to watch, and I'm going to put this on your, uh, your watch list. But now we're going to talk about the change in velocity, and this is going to involve acceleration. The average acceleration, A sub average, of an object as it moves from a point x1 at time t1 to a point x2 at time t2 is also a vector. You can speed up or you can slow down. And it is the ratio of the change in velocity to the change in time. So that is the change in velocity over the change in time is this. And the units on acceleration then are the change in velocity is going to be meters per second. If I divide that by seconds again, I get meters per second squared. You see units matter. Now, average velocity is a vector. It describes how the velocity changes with respect to time. And the sign of average velocity is not necessarily the same as the sign of velocity. Furthermore, if the object is slowing down, it is not necessarily a follow that its acceleration is negative. Similarly, if it's speeding up, it does not necessarily follow that it has a positive acceleration. <clears throat> if you find that confusing, I have another chart that will deal with that. In fact, let's look at this one. So uh, we're going to use our equation to calculate the acceleration of an astronaut who's on a spacewalk. So the astronaut has left a space shuttle on a tether. They're not floating off into space to test a new personal maneuvering device. So they have like a gun that propels them. Uh, in this case, she moves along a straight line directly away from the shuttle, and her onboard partner measures her velocity before and after certain maneuvers. So in part A, she starts at 0.8 meters per second and goes to... 1.2 meters per second, she's speeding up. But then um, in B, they're going from 1.6 meters per second to 1.2 meters per second, that is slowing down. Here they're going from negative, you notice they're going in the other direction, minus 0.4 meters per second to minus 1 point meters per second. They're speeding up, they're going faster with the speed. And here you're going from 1.6 minus 1.6 to 0 0.8 were slowing down. So you see uh, it makes a difference which way you're going and here is the calculation of the accelerations. Notice that if I am going um, uh, it makes a difference when I'm taking these sometimes it is negative and sometimes it is positive. So for example I'm speeding up if the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. So here, they're both going positive. Here, they're both going negative. But if I'm going in a positive direction, but my acceleration is negative, I'm slowing down. And if I'm going this direction, but my acceleration is the other way, I am slowing down. So you see the relationship between the sign of the acceleration and the sign of delta V are the same. Uh, and it really depends on uh, what's happening here uh, as to whether you're speeding up or slowing down. So be careful with your SIGNs. Um, and we can also talk about the difference between average and instantaneous acceleration. And uh, so we're going to find the change in the velocity of the car uh, between 1 and 3 in this picture. Here is x1, here is x2. We're looking at the change in velocity between 1 and 3. And uh, here's the equation. It is the velocity in the x direction is 60 meters per second plus this number. Notice that this is meters per second cubed, and this is times squared. So that is going to give me meters per second. So the, velocity, the velocity is going to be meters per second. I can add these velocities. So we're finding the change in velocity between t equal 1 and t equal 3. And we're going to find the average acceleration over that interval. And we're going to estimate the instantaneous acceleration during that time interval by, uh, by taking it slower and slower. So here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate um, at time uh, t2 equal 3. We have this as the velocity. At time t equal 1, we have this velocity. So the acceleration, there's a difference between this one and this one. And uh, it is uh, also, that's the change in velocity. But then I'm going to divide that by the change in time, which is 2. And so I get a positive 2 
meters per second squared. Now if I just take this tiny amount of change of time, I get as closer to one meter per second squared. Again, we see that the average acceleration is a slope on the curve, but I can actually be accelerating ever faster along the curve. So the average acceleration gets closer and closer to one meter per second squared. And so we could conclude here with calculus that the instantaneous acceleration at t equal one second is one meter per second squared. Again, the units are meters per second squared. Now, acceleration can be hard on the human body. You notice when you're in a car and you're stopping, uh, it shoves you forward. And the acceleration due to gravity is also often denoted by g. And we will learn later that g is empirically found to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and uh, the human body can withstand accelerations on the order of g without damage, because we always have that. But in contrast, jet fighter pilots experience uh, accelerations of 3 Gs can really be hurt. And above 5 Gs, they can lose consciousness. And uh, unprotected passengers might experience accelerations as great as 100 G, which really can hurt you. So uh, acceleration can cause damage to the human body. Here is LSA 12. I'm giving you a, a chart here. The above graph shows the velocity. So this is velocity is this axis here in feet per minute of a particle. And this is time going across here. This is time and this is velocity. So it starts here and it goes faster up to there. Then it goes at the same speed and down and so on and so forth. So keep knowing that this is velocity. Use the graph and your knowledge of physics. You know enough to answer this question to answer the following questions, but you do need to think about them. This is a critical thinking problem. So I ask, what is the velocity and the acceleration at time t equal one minute? Assume the particle started at zero, zero, and I didn't tell you that, but I'm telling you it now, at exactly 10.13 a.m. At what times does the particle change direction? Time should be exact and use seconds if required. Again, assuming you start at zero, zero, what is the location of the particle at time t equal 10? D, what is the average velocity and the average acceleration of the particle on the interval from 0 to 10 minutes? At what time, or perhaps times, is a particle farthest from its starting point? How far away from the starting point uh, is it at that time? And you explain your answer. This is LSA 12. In closing. Now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.